Picture this. You're stargazing on a clear night when suddenly you notice something odd. No, it's not a UFO or your neighbor's runaway drone. It's a tiny moon orbiting the moon. Yes, our moon has gotten itself a sidekick. A moon moon, a lunar intern, a cosmic roommate. But could something like this actually happen? And if so, what would it mean for Earth, the moon, and your Netflix night under the stars? Let's dive into the video. How we got our moon. Before we hand out moons to moons, let's remember how our own moon got here. About 4.5 billion years ago, Earth was just getting comfy in the solar system when it had an unfortunate run-in with another planet-sized object, now nicknamed Theia. Imagine Earth and Theia colliding like two bumper cars, but at orbital speeds. The crash was catastrophic. Theia didn't survive, but the debris from both worlds was flung into orbit around Earth. Over a few million years, that hot mess of rock and dust clumped together to form one shiny, spherical roommate, the Moon. This is called the Giant Impact Hypothesis, and while it sounds like the title of a bad sci-fi movie, it's the leading theory of the Moon's formation. Wait, so a Moon can have its own Moon? Here's the twist. Technically, yes. In astrophysics, there's even a term for it, submoon, or moon moon if you're feeling cute. Moons can form in different ways. Sometimes, they're born out of violent collisions like Earth's moon. Other times, they're captured wanderers, asteroids or icy bodies pulled into orbit by a planet's gravity. For example, Neptune's biggest moon, Triton, is thought to have been a Kuiper Belt object that Neptune snagged like a cosmic Pokemon. So could Earth's moon ever snatch up a smaller companion? Possibly, but it would require perfect conditions. The Goldilocks problem. For a moon to orbit the moon, size is everything. Too big, and the object's gravity would mess with the moon's stable orbit around Earth. Too small, and Earth's own gravitational tug would yank it away. Scientists suggest that a stable moon moon would need to be less than one kilometer across, basically asteroid size. That way, it would be small enough not to wreck the system, but big enough to stay trapped by lunar gravity. Think of it as the Goldilocks rule of space real estate. Not too heavy, not too tiny, just right. But it wouldn't last long. Even if a moon moon settled into orbit, it wouldn't stick around forever. Earth's gravity, combined with the moon's tidal forces, would constantly tug at it like two parents fighting for custody. Over time, this cosmic tug of war could do one of three things. It could fling the moon moon back into space, crash it into the moon itself, or send it spiraling toward Earth. In other words, your little moon moon might only survive for a few years, or decades if it's lucky. Long enough for scientists to get excited and conspiracy theorists to write bestsellers. Would it affect Earth? The short answer is no, not in a physical sense. A tiny rock orbiting the moon wouldn't cause tidal waves, earthquakes, or your horoscope to suddenly go off the rails. But culturally? That would be another story. Humanity has always looked up at the moon for inspiration, myths, and questionable werewolf movies. Imagine the flood of new legends, artwork, and conspiracy theories when we spot a mini-moon circling the big one. Astronomers would throw a cosmic party. Telescopes everywhere would lock onto this rare event, studying how gravity shapes orbital mechanics in real time. It would be like having a miniature solar system right next door. The worst case scenario. Let's say the worst happens. The moon moon breaks orbit and comes barreling toward Earth. At around one kilometer wide, it wouldn't be a planet killer like the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, but it wouldn't exactly be a gentle tap either. Traveling at 72,000 kilometers per hour, the impact could release energy equal to thousands of megatons of TNT. If it smacked into a city, that city would become a historical footnote. Luckily, such a small object would probably burn up or fragment in Earth's atmosphere. But if it didn't? Well, let's just say you'd want to be somewhere very far away. But what if the moon and Earth swapped sizes? Life on Little Earth. With Earth shrunken down, its gravity would drop to only about 27% of what it is now. 
That means, if you weighed 70 kilograms before, now you'd weigh about 19. Congratulations, you just got skinny without dieting. Travel would be easier too. Planes would use less fuel, rockets would blast off with ease, and you could probably dunk a basketball from the free throw line. But don't celebrate yet. Low gravity is terrible for human health. Astronauts lose muscle and bone density after just months in space. On little Earth, your body would start breaking down, muscles weakening, spine stretching, fluids rushing upward to give you what scientists call puffy face bird leg syndrome. Not a good look. And that's just the start. Goodbye, atmosphere. With such weak gravity, little Earth wouldn't be able to hold on to its atmosphere. Gases would drift into space like helium escaping a balloon. Without air, you'd need a spacesuit just to step outside. Even worse, without a molten core generating a magnetic field, solar winds would strip away whatever atmosphere remained. Radiation from the sun would fry you like bacon. And the oceans? They'd boil away into space. So much for beach vacations. Big Moon becomes the star. Meanwhile, our newly supersized moon would suddenly become the heavyweight champ of the Earth-Moon duo. Its stronger gravity would wreak havoc on little Earth's tides. Instead of gentle rises and falls of a few feet, we'd be looking at mega tsunamis flooding coastal cities daily. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions would also skyrocket, triggered by Big Moon's gravitational tugging on little Earth's molten insides. Imagine living on a planet that shakes more often than your washing machine on spin cycle. Eventually, tidal locking would kick in. Little Earth would always show the same face to Big Moon, just like our current moon does to us. Half the planet would bask in eternal moonlight, while the other half would never see it. Sounds poetic. Until you realize that eternal moonlight means eternal earthquakes and tsunamis too. Could we survive on Big Moon? Honestly, Little Earth would become so inhospitable that humanity would probably look at Big Moon and think, yeah, let's move there. Big Moon would sit in the Goldilocks zone, getting the same sunlight Earth used to. It would also have stronger gravity, closer to what we're used to, making it easier on our bodies. The problem, of course, is that Big Moon has no atmosphere and no liquid water. But humans love a challenge. Scientists could imagine blasting the crust with nuclear explosions to release trapped gases. They could mine the poles for water ice and introduce plants to produce oxygen. Over centuries of terraforming, Big Moon could start looking like a decent backup Earth. So, should we be worried? Not really. A moon moon around Earth's moon would be a fascinating cosmic oddity, but it wouldn't ruin your day. The real nightmare is if Earth and the moon swapped sizes, then we'd be toast. Still, the thought experiment is fun. It reminds us how delicate the balance of gravity, atmosphere, and planetary size really is. Change a few variables, and suddenly you're bouncing around with spaghetti legs while tsunamis flatten Manhattan. And that's the wild ride of what could happen if the moon had its own moon. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that pedat like and make sure to subscribe. Until next time, keep looking up. You never know when the moon might get a moon of its own.